Then we get to what I think maybe uh, I've gone back and forth whether this was my favorite match of the of the show uh, or the main event. But Suzu Suzuki and Saya Kamatani was great. Just under 12 minutes. And I don't know how you could have a much better 12 minute match than these two had. And I know that Suzu Suzuki is very independent. And she is, you know, a lot of ways, the driving force of prominence. And she wants to do death matches. And that's great. More power to her. But, man, if I'm stardom and I have a certain budget to play with as far as what I can spend to bring wrestlers in, and we know they love bringing new wrestlers in, I'm maxing out as much of that budget, that line item as I can to get Suzu Suzuki on shows as much as humanly possible. She is so great. She still is so early and so young in her career. And she brings something both as a character and as a wrestler that is completely different from everyone else on the roster. Um, What a great contrast between her and Kamatani as wrestlers, as characters, the visual, everything about this match was awesome. Suzuki wins with the locomotion German suplex, getting the win, uh, over Saya Kamatani, which you would have to think at some point before the end of the year, that's going to lead to a wonder of stardom belt, a, a white belt championship match between these two. And with how great this was in a, a 1140, if they get to go 18 or 20 minutes, this could be not just a great match, but a legitimate match of the year candidate in a very, very crowded field, uh, not only in Sardom, but across the landscape. Yeah, I'm glad you're driving her bandwagon. So it's just I just have to hop up on the back of it. She is <laughs> outstanding. She's 19. She's not 20 until she was. Hey, hey happy birthday, because apparently on Friday she turns 20. There you She's go. She's great. And this match was booked great. And that the layout of it was great because you had to do something here to make you think this heavy underdog had a shot. And the from the time it started, Suzuki poured it on. And she hurt Kamatani. And she went outside the ring and was like, okay. And then she kept pouring it on. And they made you believe that she had a shot because she kept kicking her ass. Because you're thinking, too, it's like, you know, you got your wrestling brain and the psychology of, okay, at some point... Kamatani's going to come back. And we just had a match. You know, this is following that Saki match that you mentioned went, you know, half the time pretty much that this did. But Saki actually held the advantage for the entire match pretty much yes. until Himeka got it. And in this one, it's like, oh, okay, Suzuki doesn't have a win yet. She's nuts. She's probably going to get disqualified. She's going to make a mistake. Something's going to happen here. But as it kept going, you had a li- that meter in your mind kept going down a little bit more. And then by the time Kamatani got a little bit of a comeback right before the end, you know, she hulked up, she caught her on the top rope. But then, his, and this is a thing, and we'll get with Julia later on too. Guys with the headbutts, ladies, please stop with the headbutts. But after the headbutt, we got that locomotive, uh, the German. It was great. The whole thing was laid out great. It ended great. And you can't say, you can't throw more superlatives on Suzu Suzuki at 19 years old. I mean, just brilliant. And again, she may be ungovernable, but if she's willing, you know, if you can, if she's willing, you know, even if she's not willing, make sure you have some sort of deal where and lines of communication where you can continue to bring her back because she's going to be a star and she's going to continue to build fans. I have a feeling for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's going to end up going to come to America. People are going to see her on a GCW show or a West Coast Pro show. Oh, and she's going to be one of those people out. that, yeah, it's going to be, she's going to end up having some heavy buzz. So I hope well, it works out and she joins much, stardom. But uh, how much of buzz among, like, hardcore, you know, what, GCW fans, whatever you want to say, uh, American indie fans that enjoy, uh, you know, a bit of the death match. How much uh, buzz Rina Yamashita has had yeah. coming over to the U.S. these last couple of years. And no slight to her. She's great at what she does. But Suzu, Suzu, Suzu Suzuki is another level. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I'm very excited to see whenever that happens. And I just think, you know, when all this happened with with prominence forming, with, you know, all them leaving Ice Ribbon, you know, a lot of questions of like, what is Suzu Suzuki's career going to be, you know, going forward, like what is the path to her doing more than just 
kind of, you know, going across the country, you know, working smaller shows, you know, occasional prominence uh, produced shows. And here we see what, you know, kind of what the path is, even if she doesn't go full time stardom, um, like it seems like it's going very well. And I can't imagine either side not wanting to continue at least going down the path that they've gone so far with her in stardom. Let's hope so. Let's hope so. Next match was uh, Azumi and Utami Haishishida. This only went six minutes and 55 seconds, a quick battle of Queen's Quest with Azumi getting the victory. Um, well, a huge, when you think about it, a huge win for Azumi. It is. Haya Shishida, even if she hasn't been up until recently, you know, considered the leader of Queen's Quest, for all intents and purposes, she has been. This is not someone that Azumi has gotten singles wins over in the past. This puts Azumi at 12, keeps Haya Shishida at 8. All action, in some ways, while they're different types of wrestlers, similar to uh, the Natsupoi Mayu Iwatani match, in that you know the two of them have a great match that's two to three times as long as this uh, in them uh, against each other in a non-tournament setting. But here for what it was, like this is what a lot of times makes uh, the Five Star Grand Prix so great, in that you had a match that really... It just started immediately with like a seven minute finishing stretch. And that was the entire match. You had a great finish. Uh, Izumi hitting the Canadian destroyer on Haya Shishida and then going straight into her Izumi sushi uh, <laughs> roll up pin uh, to get the win. So very, very good stuff here. And I can't wait to see somewhere down the line. Uh, the two of them have a bigger singles match going forward. I- I'm always on the lookout for any signs that uh, both Izumi and Starlight Kid uh, on a singles level are going to find their way out of just being in the uh, the high speed championship scene and really one, if not both of them, not only getting a white belt or red belt title shot, but actually holding one of those belts going forward. So how this tournament's gone so far, I think, is a, a fairly decent sign of, of where Azumi's standing is in the promotion. You know, I didn't love it, and I thought, you know, to get this type of victory over, and I, granted, it's the five-star Grand Prix, so you're going to have victories like this, but, like, you know, I wish this would have been that match that was three times longer, and we got three times more, and she got the victory, and I think... You know, and again, it it is just picking nits here for me, but I didn't love it as much as you did. Of course, it was also because it was sandwiched between, for me, the best match, which was the Suzuki match, and then Mayu and Julia that would have been even better, except, you know, they had a plan for the end of it, and with hindsight being twenty twenty, I know exactly, you know, why it was the way that it was, but... You know, this could have been, again, if you got a finish and you got a little bit more time to it, this probably would have been the match of the night. And well, think just... back to their time limit draw that they had a couple months ago. Um, and it sure as hell feels like everything about this tournament, really going back to last year when it couldn't happen, everything feels like it's Julia winning this tournament and going on to defeat Shuri. Yeah for the red belt, most likely on the December 29th show, who knows, maybe sooner, but I would imagine that would be when the match would happen. And man, you want to talk about the next big title match after that, or one of Julia's biggest first defenses she could have a match against Mayu Iwatani when they've only gone to draws prior. Yep. You know, that's talk about a match that has match of the year and big crowd written all over it. So this was great. Like you said, it could have been, even better if the circumstances were different, but it's totally understandable why the circumstances weren't different. And so we uh, we move on with both of them. Yeah, we talked about it on the show. You know, we've had the same vision for Julia, you know, and I'm in the tank for her. And I think, you know, her with that belt, the matches that you can make, the things that you can do, not the least of which is another match with Iwatani. I just, she's the answer. She is the star and... Well, maybe is the only other way is the only way that she doesn't win this tournament and go on to win the red belt if with the idea now that we have an IWGP women's championship, is it more valuable for her to win that tournament and have that championship? You know, that's the only thing I can see that would change what seems like it's been an obvious direction for the last year plus. Yeah, yeah actually, that would be a great idea. 
that would be a, a really it would be interesting because it would then be a matter of the booking and how you utilize that champion and that championship and do they travel and you know there's some you know to me well i think it definitely travels i mean that's one of the main stated purposes of that title is for it to be defended on new japan usa shows well, much I, less well like because julie is one of the people that i'm putting on the plane any other shows I, and and putting every single place that I can in front of every single media source that I can, you know, I want her, I want Mayu, and again, I don't know how many people you can spare at a time to do that, but like... I, I still think Natsupoy is absolutely one of the people that should be, you know, really heavily pushed and presented in America whenever that time comes as well. I mean, there's there's no shortage of people. Starlight Kid, obviously, as well. You know, I talked out before how I would have just thrown uh, – I'd send Hameka and Azumi over and tell them to do that match, that eight-minute match they did a few weeks ago in the Fire Star Grand Prix. Do that on a big show in the U.S. and people are going to just go crazy. But, yeah, there's there's no shortage of people. No, and Suri, to a different extent, because of her background, because it's a relatable thing, it's so easy with the UFC thing. It's, oh, okay, you know, and the, you see her work. And, again, I just – again, it, Julia – is the one that I look at and go, okay, she is your Okada in my eyes, and I could be batshit insane, but I think she's your Tanahashi, she's your Okada, and wherever you can get her and make the name of stardom bigger and as much as you can you know, put it on her back, when you have so many strong backs there, I, I just, you know, again, that, that's what I thought they were going with this. That's the direction I think they're going is exactly what you said, and I think you have... Iwatani, and then you have Kyrie, and then you ha- you go and you have so many matches that she can have, and hey, I'm I'm for it. All I have is a few questions. Oh, good, my favorite. Is it duplex or suplex, or is it both? A wrestling move where you <laughs> grab your opponent and throw him backwards through the air is a suplex. A housing complex with two homes built connected as a duplex yeah it's never been duplex granny but you've you've said this now for 15 okay, years so we just I, yeah let yeah. it let it go yeah. so i thought once and for all i want to know which it is so it's duplex and not suplex right no a it's, suplex it's is suplex a suplex and not duplex <laughs> oh okay <laughs> duplex is a housing development granny ulysses s grant's battle we, we, we definitely read these skip forward no, a few pages no no okay no. all right all right go ahead we didn't do this one okay yeah, this person says we did. This person says we did it. I protest. There must be two of them then. <laughs> I protest. <laughs> he wrote the same one twice. Yeah. I like this one about Grant so much. I'm going to put it in the book twice. I, I'm telling you, I wasn't back this time. Okay, far. fine. Read another one. Yeah, everyone's saying we read these last week, Granny. Big deal. <laughs> Who cares, but everybody? All the, but all the researchers today. Are you reading the book the wrong way? No. Okay. What do you think I am? I don't know. You keep saying you're going back. <laughs> Why would we go back when reading a book? We're supposed to go forward. Maybe what happens, Granny, is you put the bookmark in, and then when you open it to that page, you start reading the ones we already read. Maybe the bookmark should go on the next page. No. Okay. <laughs> what do they say in court? I object. I object. Objection, Your Honor. Yeah, that's right. I didn't read that again. Overruled, Granny, you did. <laughs> All right. Anything else, Granny? You're guilty. <laughs> well. <laughs> go to go to jail. Your guilty was the high spot of the week. Oh, you shut me off. No. Oh, you're right here. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? There was some weird rumbling going on. Like she, she's unplugging your own cord there. I think you unplugged the cord. I can't hear you. you, you can you hear me? Can you hear me? I, I'll message you. I'll message you. I hear you now. Oh, now you do? Yeah, now I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Uh, what happened? <laughs> I don't know. Ah! All right. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.